Welcome to ESPN College Basketball, part of Jimmy V Week for Cancer Research on ESPN as we continue our commitment to the V Foundation and Jim Balvano's dream to defeat cancer. Hi, folks. Thanks for joining us. Mike Morgan alongside former Virginia All-American Corey Alexander. Great to be with you today as 12th-ranked North Carolina takes on East Carolina. Still people trying to make heads or tails of the Tar Heels. Certainly they're good. They're nationally ranked. They've defeated Florida. They've defeated UCLA. But, Corey, a lot of people concerned about some shooting woes and rebounding woes for this team this year. And that's really been the telltale sign for North Carolina this year, simply about how well they shot the basketball. Only 28% against Iowa on Wednesday night. And more importantly, Marcus Page, their best player, preseason All-American, has not shot the ball extremely well on the season. A lot of that has to do with the fact that 50 of his 85 field goal attempts early in the year have been beyond the three-point line. In my opinion, Mark Space needs to get back to being a penetrator and mixing it up, not just relying on the threes, but scoring in many different areas. And Marcus Page shooting just 35% from the field overall. Earlier, two men familiar with one another, Roy Williams and former North Carolina All-ACC performer Jeff Lebo, the head coach of East Carolina now. East Carolina Pirates now in the American Conference, formerly of Conference USA. North Carolina comes in 5-2. and two. East Carolina 4-4. Four and four. They're very excited about their guards. Terry Wisnett is a transfer from Florida State. Caleb White is a guy that has been one of the top shooters thus far in the American Conference. For the Tar Heels, we already talked about Marcus Page. He is the engine that makes this Tar Heel offense go, but he needs some help. Is it going to be Tokido? Justin Jackson, the freshman, that's a guy Roy Williams told us has to step up his game to take some of the pressure off of Page. And then Johnson and Meeks will patrol the paint for the Tar Heels. It's another great crowd here in Chapel Hill on a Sunday afternoon. North Carolina coming in off a tough loss from Iowa after this game. You've got exams, so obviously the Tar Heels want to get some of that mo back, Corey Alexander, and it all starts this afternoon. Absolutely, and of course, we talked to Coach Williams, and he talked about the most important game you'll play is the one that you have right now. This is the most important game for the Tar Heels. They need to get back feeling more confident, and I believe they can do so here against East Carolina, but I'm sure the Pirates don't want that to happen. These two teams, although they're only separated by 111 miles, they've only met three times. North Carolina has won all three. This is just the second meeting since 1993. The last one was the most competitive. You see just a four-point game a few years ago. Johnson jumping center against Nziggy, and the Pirates control the opening tip are underway from Chapel Hill. White up top to Nziggy. And over to the left side to Wisnant. He's the Florida State transfer. They're very excited about what he can bring to the table. And that's one thing he brings is the shooting ability. He knows how to be successful against this North Carolina team. He was a member of the 2012 Florida State team that beat North Carolina in the ACC championship, but a different group. Backdoor cut by Kennedy Meeks to tie it up. Kennedy Meeks has lost some weight, looks a lot more nimble this year. He does. I was joking with him in shooting around earlier today. He doesn't wear the T-shirt under his uniform anymore. He's got those guns going now. What should we look for out of North Carolina defensively today? Well, you know, one of the things with North Carolina is their length now. When you talk about starting Justin Jackson, who goes about 6'7", as your shooting guard, you're a much longer team, and then you add Bryce Johnson into the starting lineup. So now they are better defensively. Coach Williams doesn't think that they've arrived to where they can be defensively, but in my opinion, they're much better on the defensive end than they've been really over the past couple of years. And J.P. Tokido, who actually leads North Carolina in assists, finding Kennedy Meeks over the top, the alley-oop Meeks with the soft hands laying it in. And it's really amazing that Tokido is the leading assist guy when you're playing alongside a preseason All-American and Marcus Payne. That number jumped off the page to me as well. 30 assists this year for Tokido. Not exactly known for his passing, but that's been the case so far. Roy Williams raved about how much he's improved, not only as a defender, but just as an overall basketball player. Still needs to work on that shot, but he's excited about the, about the improvement of Tokido. Good box out by Meeks. And a quick shot rims in for Tokido. 
And of course, if he can do that consistently, he raises his game to a completely different level. You talk about one of the best athletes in the ACC and really in the country, and J.P. Tokato, he's known for that and his defensive ability. But if he adds that jump shot into the mix, he could be unstoppable. Rare shot inside for the Pirates. That's in Gary, who averages four and a half points, five rebounds a game, a 6'9 junior. And a nice move going over a very good defender in Kennedy Meeks on the block. If you can score on Kennedy Meeks, you can score on pretty much anyone in college basketball. Off the front rim and off the hand of Kennedy Meeks. Here come the Pirates. White, strong take, tapped up and in. That's been a problem for this North Carolina team surrendering way too many offensive rebounds. Absolutely, gave up 29 offensive rebounds and then lost to Butler in the battle for Atlantis. And that really exposed a weakness, but one that you wouldn't expect to have with the team with so much length, especially on the interior. Shot rims out for Bryce Johnson. Pirates hail from the American Conference, their first year in that league. Shot way off the mark. Johnson clears it. If you're new to the American Conference, pretty impressive slate of teams, including the defending champion UConn Huskies, Memphis, Cincinnati, and SMU. Broken up on the play. That's a little free safety there by Tokido. We talked about the lack of of rebounding for North Carolina. It's surprising, and Roy Williams talked to us about this today, because they've got so much size and length. Six players of 6'8 or taller, Corey. Well, it'll definitely come into play today, of course, when you're talking about East Carolina, who only has three players of 6'8 or more. But more importantly for North Carolina, they always have games. But they've got wing players that are 6'6", six, 6'7", six, six, and, and very good defenders when you talk about, you know, Theo Pinson coming off against Tokyo. They still have size in all the other positions, not necessarily their power forward and centers, but their wings are, are very long and active. Page on a three. Run out, Pirates, Robinson. That was just a foot race, and Antonio Robinson won it. Well, and that's just one of the rules of the game of basketball, especially when your point guard takes a three-point shot that's not from the top of the key. Somebody else has to get back. And right there, Robinson using his speed, getting out. He's not much of a scorer for the East Carolina Pirates. However, a great you know, defender and distributor, but that time getting an easy basket transition. Meeks draws the double, big to big, bucket in the foul. Beautiful play. Meeks to Bryce Johnson. A chance for three when we come back. Pirates eight and the Tar Heel six. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by Progressive. Visit Progressive.com today. Watching the ACC on ESPN. Hometown Tar Heels trailing early on, 8-6 to six, with 15.41 to play in half number one. Just what do we know about East Carolina? Mentioned they were recently moved to the American Conference, a highly competitive league featuring the Connecticut Huskies, among other teams, you look at their point distribution, 51% coming from the free throw line. They have made an astounding 140 free throws already. That's the 12th best mark in the country. And they, they don't necessarily have to rely on any one guy. They have two guys. B.J. Tice, who actually does the start, comes off the bench as a freshman, averaging 16 points a game. Caleb White averaging over 14. But more importantly, it's the slashing to the rim, finding their way to the free throw line, and taking advantage of what's free. And they've really distributed very well. They've got four guys already early in this game with two points. Johnson completes the three-point play. Bryce Johnson will go to the bench, the junior from the state of South Carolina, a state that produced All-American guard Raymond Felton, another Tar Heel. One-point game, Pirates with the basketball. They've looked sharp on offense so far. Another good look, but an air ball. On the run out. Jumper is good. That's Nate Britt, who has gone from lefty to righty. <laughs> a lot of people watching at home who know the North Carolina Tar Heels may not have recognized that because Nate Britt pulls up now with the right hand instead of shooting left-handed, which is not something you see happen often. 
Well, especially when guys get the, the college ranks at one. This level alone, switching hands on your jump shot. That's impressive to say the least. And he's shooting much better with the right yeah. hand. Hey, whatever works. He's doubled his three-point totals already from, you know, within the first seven games than what he had last year as a freshman. Strong take. And a foul call. That's going to be offensive on Isaiah Hicks. J.P. Tokido, another assist, getting out in transition, finding Nate Britton. You see the right-hand jump shot, and it looks good. And it feels good, especially when it goes down. Nate Britton knocking down shots, and again, he hit three three-pointers last year as a freshman shooting left hand. He had a hitch. I remember I watched Nate Britton a lot since he was in high school, had the opportunity to spend a lot of time with him. Had quite a hitch in the shot. Over the summer, switched it to the right hand, got a lot of repetitions. And, I mean, he's already hit six three-pointers in seven games this season. I mean... It works. He still shoots his free throws left hand. Right. That, that's what makes it so bizarre. That'd be like a, a golfer who plays righty but then putts left-handed. Uh, no, I, I don't actually, know if I've ever seen that happen. I actually play golf right-handed and putt left-handed. Do you not? I, I promise you. <laughs> now, I'm, I'm no good with either wow. one, but that's the way I play. I putt left-handed and I, everything else is right-handed. I'm not good with either, so it doesn't really matter. Uh, the delay there, incidentally, they were determining who had last foul was on North Carolina. It was indeed on Hicks. Out of bounds. It'll be Tar Heels basketball. Don't feel bad. I don't play golf well righty or left. No, no. I don't feel bad about that one at all. I mean, other than you just called me a little off because you don't see it. <laughs> but I won't take it personally. <laughs> Unique, I guess, was the word I was looking for, Corey. Okay, special. Yes. Three ball straight away. That's the shot they need Justin Jackson to make. Roy Williams couple hours for the game you and I sat in his office and he said we need number 44 to become more of a scorer take some of the pressure off of Marcus Page and that's what he's done his entire life and he will be that Justin Jackson will be a scorer at this level in any level of basketball he plays but that's where he's improved is his ability to defend and stay in plays using that length. Hicks slam off a Tokido pass after Tokido jumped off his pogo stick for another block and a timeout called by Jeff Lebo. And, and Justin Jackson staying in the play, forcing his man baseline. It was really three Carolina Tar Heels getting in there. <laughs> Kennedy Meeks may have gotten credit for that. But J.P. Tokito really improved as far as his floor game and passing the basketball. Now his third assist already early in this game and finding his teammates. J.P. Tokido definitely growing as a player. And that time Isaiah Hicks the benefit of you see where North Carolina ranks, and they've always been a good passing team under Roy Williams. Points you would expect them to be in the upper third. The numbers that are daunting, the field goal percentage, the three-point percentage, just 29% from behind the arc. And again, that's where somebody has to take the pressure off of Marcus Page. Well, and more importantly, as Coach Williams talked to us about before the game, that's not who they are. Right. They're not a three-point shooting team. So a lot of the three-pointers that they're taking are bad shots. Mm -hmm. And he's, his thing is not necessarily someone else has to become more of a three-point shooter. Just stop taking bad shots. Yeah. And we don't have to worry about, you know, trying to take all the threes. Let's play to our strength. It's a little strange around here the last couple of years hearing people talking about North Carolina struggling to shoot the ball. You just expect Tar Heel teams to shoot it well. Well, because they've always had guys that did shoot it well. And you, you're two years removed from having both P.J. Harrison and Reggie Bullock firing away threes, you know, in the Carolina blue. White on a three. Boy, they are now 0 of 7 from behind the arc. Half of those have not hit the rim. Inside. Another slam for Isaiah Hicks, giving the rim a workout. You know, again, that's a scenario where J.P. Tokido, instead of firing a three, makes the extra pass and they get a dunk because of it. And I'm not saying that, you know, East Carolina really has the size to contend with North Carolina in the paint, so it won't always be that simple. But still, don't fire up a bad shot and try to get a better one. And that's what Carolina did in that last possession. Oh, of eight from three for the Pirates. Tokido slashes, dashes, rims out. Hoop and the harm for Isaiah Hicks. He has been active so far in this first half. Six points for the sophomore. And again, the move, ball movement by North Carolina. J.B. Tokido not selling for a three, finding Isaiah Hicks under the basket, who's able to finish over top of a small defender. But Carolina will always have length. 
regardless as to who they play outside of Kentucky, they'll be they'll be probably bigger and, and, and more than anyone else that they'll play against as far as competition. Those are the type of shots they need to take. Instead of forcing up a bunch of threes, get the ball inside the paint. Now, not that they can't shoot threes. Marcus Page is a very good three-point shooter. Nate Britt has improved. You know, Theo Penson, Justin Jack, they have a number of guys that can make shots, but they don't have to settle for those. Mass substitutions, and you see Isaiah Hicks getting an ovation as he goes to the bench with seven. The Tar Heels on a 7-0 run and a 12-2 run over the last three and change. Shot clock under 10. Now down to five. Prince Williams going to have to make something happen with two. And Johnson clears for the Tar Heels off and running. Tough shot by Joel James. Nice pass inside, an easy slam for the Pirates. That's in Ziggy, who is from Switzerland, but of French descent, speaks three languages, French, German, and English. And because of Terry Wilson's ability to shoot the three, North Carolina playing a lot of attention to him coming off their screen and roll. And Wisner doing a great job finding his teammate underneath East Carolina within four with the two-hand slam. Way before I knew him when he first got at North Carolina State, and I was an assistant there. And the, the passion that he had for life, and uh, the passion that he fought uh, cancer with, you know, never, never give up is something that uh, people always remember. Comments from Roy Williams it is Jimmy V Week, and a reminder to donate the number you just saw on your screen every year. It has been tremendously successful raising money to find a cure for cancer. Roy Williams talking to us today, one of the first things we just asked him, you know, how are you doing? And quite honestly, he said he wasn't doing real well. His wife has had some health issues and one of his best friends, Ted Seagroves, recently passed away of pancreatic cancer. And that was his golfing buddy, longtime friend. That really hit him hard, as you can imagine. Just another indicator of cancer striking somebody, in this case, Coach Williams. And he passed on Tuesday, of course, the day before North Carolina you know, played Iowa in the ACC Big Ten Challenge. And, you know, I mean, it, it is tough. He, one of the things is, you know, people look at, of course, coaches and players almost as superhuman, and things like that affect you. He's been dealing with his wife's, you know, issues as far as health issues. He had his own health issues a couple years ago. That's one of the first things I asked was, how are you doing? And he said physically, he knew what I was talking about. He says, physically, I'm fine, because I was referring to his health issues that he had in the past. But he said, you know, it was just a lot going on. And he told us a story about his friend passing. And, um, you know, he's not superhuman. Things do affect him. Of course, you know, coaches and players are emotional as well. Williams responding after a token of three-point play. East Carolina. Looking solid here in the first half, five-point game. Robinson in the front court. Pull-up jumper is good. Robinson looking to attack a little more than he normally has. Only averages about three points a game, has four already early in this one, and being much more aggressive on the offensive end. Robinson, a senior, you know how much it means to anybody wearing an East Carolina uniform, the opportunity to play here in Chapel Hill. Johnson bumped from behind and fouled by Robinson. The Holiday Hoops doubleheader begins Sunday, December the 14th at 4 o'clock on ESPNU at 4. It's the Louisiana Tech Bulldogs battling big man Raheem Christmas in Syracuse. Then UNC Wilmington squares off against fifth-ranked Louisville in their monstrous front court on ESPNU, the home court of college hoops. We were just talking so well about Robson. He actually just picked up his third personal foul, so we won't see him again.
for the first half. And, of course, when you get three in the first half, that definitely determines the way you're going to play in the second half. You take away a lot of his aggressiveness, who, of course, is a very good defensive point guard and will be one of the guys that has to take on the challenge of guarding Marcus Page. Deflected out of bounds by Williams. It'll be North Carolina basketball. Page to Barry. And inside to James. Nice left hand hook shot by the big man. And if you're North Carolina, there's very little East Carolina's going to be able to do guarding you on the inside, whether it's Joel James, Kennedy Meeks, Bryce Johnson, whoever it may be, they're going to have the advantage on the interior. And if you're North Carolina, this is an opportunity for you to continue to develop that strength alone. Quick hands by the Tar Heels. Page wants it. Page thought about it, takes it strong, and draws the foul. And I like that play by Marcus Page. Just missed a three-pointer. And, of course, again, he's a very good three-point shooter. Have no problem with him taking that shot. Yet, instead of settling for another three-point shot, the pump fake and attacks the basket, getting to the free throw, give him an opportunity to see the ball go through the basket and start to build some confidence right there. And, of course, a great free throw shooter. And that's where he really puts pressure on opposing teams is getting to the free throw line and being more aggressive and not just settling for three points and being a shooter, being a playmaker overall. And that was one of the numbers that Roy Williams says has to improve. 58% of Page's shots right now from behind the arc. That's too many. And he's too good of a penetrator to not balance that out a little bit. Second opportunity for the Heels missed as Williams goes top floor for the rebound. You see the shooting today. If East Carolina can hit a couple of those threes, they're right in this. Johnson with the foul on the perimeter. When talking to Coach Lebo, that was one of the things that they were concerned about as well is they could make shots in this building. And honestly, East Carolina would have a very tough time coming in here beating North Carolina, only making twos. They're going to have to knock down some three pointers in order to really keep Carolina at bay because Carolina is going to have the advantage shooting the ball inside the bank. Foul was on Bryce Johnson. He's had problems with foul trouble this year. Nice take, but unable to cash in was Prince Williams. Pinson, baseline jumper is good for Bryce Johnson, the largest lead for the Tar Heels of eight. And again, great ball movement, being patient on offense for North Carolina, finding the best shot. And that was Bryce Johnson knocking down the 10-footer on the baseline. White. Offensive foul. They're going to count the basket and call the charge. You don't see that a whole lot in today's game of college basketball where they give you both. Absolutely, but Caleb White letting the ball go well before the offensive fouls. You see he releases the basketball before the contact. So therefore the foul is only at the point of contact. The ball was already out of his hands, which means it still counts. Great call by the official. They have gone back this year to the block charge rule of two years ago. It doesn't matter if the ball is rising in the shooter's hands. If the defender has his feet set before the offensive player goes up, that is an offensive foul, as you just saw. Jumper is good for Nate Britt. It's amazing to me how confident he looks shooting the ball right-handed after pretty much a lifetime of shooting left-handed. He's always been you know, able to use both hands very well. Still, of course, we talked about shooting his free throws left-handed. His father actually made him pick one or the other as a young kid. That's a great pass by Meeks. And terrific passing to Nate Britt to finish it. He has six of the Tar Heels are out to a 10-point lead. And two great passes, as you mentioned. One from Kenny Meeks on the outlet, then Theo Pinson finding Nate Britt, not forcing the shot. Jump ball. Bryce Johnson got his hands on the pumpkin, and the arrow goes to North Carolina. 7.48 to go, first half. The Tar Heels trying to get some points in transition. Great passing here. Pinson. 
Back to 18, 15 points off the bench for 12th ranked North Carolina. A tough out of conference battle highlights next Saturday's journey to the tourney matchup as the Wolverines face a tough road test against Rondé Hollis Jefferson of the Wildcats. The journey to the tourney as part of Holiday Hoops Saturday, December the 13th at 5.15 on ESPN. Mike Morgan alongside former Virginia All-American Corey Alexander. Great to be with you on this Sunday afternoon. Little college hoops to get things cranked up today. We know the college football first ever Final Four is in. And now we start focusing on who's going to make it to college basketball's Final Four. Tokido, look out. Seven for the junior. He's been taking care of everybody else so far in this game. Already four assists. That time he took care of himself, rightfully so, with the highlights slam point to the rim. You played with and against some great leapers in your time. Where does Tokido rank? Well, hold on, are you saying that I wasn't? <laughs> <laughs> That's not <dark> there. <laughs> well, uh, well, that right there, of course, Theo Pinson knows that he is, but Tokido didn't go after the lob. That was a highlight, but of course, he makes up for it by knocking down the 15-footer on the baseline. Tokido's got nine. I played with a number of great athletes throughout my entire career, both in college basketball and the NBA, and he ranks right up there with the best of them. And, you know, you think about guys in the ACC, you see Tokido rising to the occasion right here on the highlight slam. Give you another angle. Oh, baseline angle. I like that a little better. Shows you the force in which he threw that through with. But I mean, you think about Tokoso, you think about Justin Anderson at Virginia. I mean, you, you've got a number of great athletes. Aaron Thomas at Florida State. I mean, it, the list goes on and on. Every team pretty much in ACC has that one guy that when he gets out of the fast break, everybody in the crowd stands up because they want to see what's going to happen next. Tokido goes 6'6", six, six, and you see Tahani at the free throw line. He's one of their young guards, a freshman they think is going to be the future of the offense for the Pirates out of Pompano Beach, Florida. Page gliding into front court. Inside, great pass to Meeks. That was a terrific feed from up top by Justin Jackson. It was, and North Carolina as a team sharing the ball so well. I believe that's their 10th assist already. And this one's only one turnover. And with that type of ball movement, you're always going to have a chance to be successful. White double dribble. Five turnovers in the last two minutes now for East Carolina. You see what East Carolina does scoring-wise, those two guys are always in the thick of it. B.J. Tyson and Caleb White, the second highest scoring tandem in the American Conference, but so far they're off to a bit of a slow start. Absolutely, and when you know that North Carolina comes in, you're going to pay these two guys special attention and make sure you try to make other teams, other players on the team have to beat you. Right now, North Carolina defensively doing a great job on those two. Got those cracks at it. Williams clears for the Pirates. Three on three, East Carolina going to take it strong. There's the move by the freshman we just alluded to, Lance Tejada. And he got from point A to point B very quickly right there, putting the pressure on Carolina in transition and able to finish up the rim. Hicks. The second shot by Jackson. The lid was on the basket for the Tar Heels the last couple of trips down. Tejada feeling it. That's probably not a heat the shot that Coach Lebo wanted right there. But that's a great pass by Marcus Page. Kennedy Meeks running the floor. The entire East Carolina team had their head turned with Marcus Page. Great pass. Oh, look at the catch by Kennedy Meeks. Not just the pass, but the catch. And knowing where the camera is, making sure he let him know that that counts and one. You know that as a former player. You guys pretend you don't know where the cameras are. You yeah, know. You, you can't look at the camera. <laughs> you just have to make sure your actions are seen by the camera. Right. It's, a, it's a science to it. It's Absolutely. A science to it. Second foul on Zangari. You and I saw a good deal of Kennedy Meeks last year. He's just a different player now. He really is. I think he's a lot more confident in his new body. I mean, last year he came in 
we'll call it with a little baby fat. You know, he's always been extremely skilled, but, you know, his new body and, of course, you know, getting himself in this type of shape gives him that confidence and, more importantly, allows him to be on the court and play, you know, play hard for longer stretches of the game, even though he's coming out because he pretty much shot an air ball at the free throw line. We're going to talk about that. I'm going to catch him later and have to, <laughs> have to talk to him about that one. He got the big smile going on because he knows his teammates are going to get him when he gets over there and sits down. Sometimes you have to laugh to cover up the pain. <laughs> well, right now he's smiling. He knows. Yes, Kennedy, we're talking about you shooting an air ball, and you may be on not top ten. This is where you don't want the camera time. You're trying to hide from the camera when you're an air ball, a free throw. Tejada, wide open three in the corner. That's a beautiful take by a guy who's going to be a scorer at some point, Justin Jackson. And that's that's his game right there. His game is not necessarily standing around shooting three-pointers, but he knows how to finish and how to put the ball in the back. Jackson whistled for the foul. East Carolina is so aggressive, that's why they shoot so many free throws. See Justin Jackson getting out in transition and not picking up the charge, the sidestep, protecting the basketball, finishing above the rim. And, you know, again, that's a scorer's mentality, understanding that he's not just going to go in there full speed and run someone over and pick up the charge. He'll avoid that contact, find a crease in the defense, and find a way to score. Jackson, whose father actually ran track at Blinn Junior College in Texas, if you know. If you feel like Blinn Junior College sounds familiar, that's where Cam Newton played before he went to Auburn. He won a national championship at Blinn Juco and then won, of course, a national championship with the Auburn Tigers. Give and go, easy dunk for Rice Johnson. And no one from East Carolina even saw it. <laughs> By the time they figured out that Bryce Johnson was dunking and he was already running back down the floor, no help side defense. Tyson, out of the corner to White, and up top to Tejada. The shot clock is now under 10 seconds. Bryce Johnson, top floor for the rebound. He's got six caroms. Come the Tar Heels. Jackson, crossover. Jackson, tough shot. Third effort is good for Bryce Johnson. Johnson has nine. And that's really where Roy Williams thought this team would be strong coming into the season. And they still very well could end up that way. It's on the offensive glass. If you're not a great shooting team, sometimes you just got to put it up there and go get it. With the size they have on their front line, they can be one of those teams. And Bryce Johnson will be important to that. But he's got to be able to stay out of foul trouble stay on the court to be able to do it. Nice cut. And a good finish by Prince Williams, a 6'5 junior out of Raleigh, North Carolina. And this East Carolina team runs good offense. Of course, you would expect that when you're talking about Jeff Lebo, one of the best offensive players really to ever play in North Carolina. They're going to run good stuff. Right now, they've got a young team, maybe not necessarily the talent to be able to pull it off, but he's had a good, had a good thing going at East Carolina over the last few years. Nice floater thrown up by Marcus Page. I like that shot by Mark Page. Not settling again, but finding his way into the paint, putting pressure on the defense. He's got a lot of great touch around the basket and continue to help your team in more ways than just being a three-point shooter. Tejada. Wow. That young man is going to be a force for years to come in the American Conference. Absolutely. He's getting a lot of minutes now. Robinson on the bench with three fouls in the first half. We can look forward to seeing a little more of Tejada once we get to the second half. You may be able to see that a few more times on the highlight reel as well. <laughs> a great tip in by Bryce Johnson, who actually was a pass for Marcus Page, but just the body control to be able to find the rim. 
Johnson has 11, and look at this. Lance Tejada, 6'2", freshman, making a name for himself today. He's got six. Great hustle by Johnson to Jackson. And a blind pass off the hands of Hubert. Johnson relentless on the offensive glass. He's got a game-high 13. And if you're Roy Williams, you have to love the effort. Not only from Bryce Johnson, but J.P. Tokyo, they've got three guys in white uniforms going after that offensive rebound. And now Steve Robinson up cheering these guys on, knowing the break is coming, and they need a break right now. But he wants them to continue to compete on the defensive end. Tyson trick shots it off the glass and in. Bryce Johnson, incidentally, already has a double-double, 13 points and 11 rebounds. We've been trying to get our under four time out in, and we still haven't been able to do it. These guys need a break. Jump ball, possession arrow to East Carolina. You could call this an alley oop or maybe even alley oops, but it goes in regardless. Bryce Johnson for two more. Thank you much, and you're certainly right. They're looking like a top 10 team, which many people thought they would be throughout this season. Part of the reason they're shooting 52%, and Corey, part of the reason for those numbers, the balance and so many points coming inside today. And I think that's where they can continue to be successful, throwing the ball in the paint, allowing that size and the skill they have with those big guys to take over. And then, of course, when you have 13 assists only one turnover, you're going to get quality looks. Roy Williams has to be happy with the way his, come, his guys have come out and responded here, especially after a loss on Wednesday. But more importantly, I think this Carolina team is a better defensive team, and that, that is going to help them as they continue to play up throughout the season and get into ACC play. Tar Heels holding opponents to 34% from the field. It's the fourth best mark in the country. Two-second differential, game clock to shot clock. Pirates look content to bleed the clock. Williams with five to shoot. Probes the left side. Rejected. Set back by Justin Jackson. Good if it goes for Pinson. Off the mark. And that's how half number one will come to a close. What a half it was for Bryce Johnson, the junior. A double-double in half number one as the Tar Heels take a 19-point lead to the locker room. 48-29, our score as we send it back to the studio. All right, so uh, nothing happened. Basketball, part of Jimmy V Week for Cancer Research on ESPN as we continue our commitment to the V Foundation and Jim Valvano's dream to defeat cancer. Tar Heels, 48, Pirates, 29, as we get ready for the start of the second half, a first half really that was dominated by North Carolina. We talked about some of the deficiencies in the two losses for the Tar Heels this year, but they pretty much ironed everything out. Great shooting in the first half, over 50%. And how about the first half by Bryce Johnson, already a double-double? Well, you know, a double-double for a game is a good game, but when you do it in a half, it's a great half. And Bryce Johnson getting the job done here. A great pass by Kennedy Beach to find Bryce Johnson on the basket with the M1 opportunity. But then he starts to show off many more of the weapons in his arsenal. And this right here, the tap, this great touch to be able to find the basket and tip that in off of a Marcus Page pass, telling him it's okay, you can just throw it anywhere. Now, if your starting senior point guard gets 3,000 in the first half, this is exactly what you need. Your backup, Tejada, coming in and attacking the basket. He's been a spark plug for East Carolina here in the first half, but they're going to have to get some more production out of their big two. Tyson and Caleb White both combined average over 30 points a game. They only have four points in the first half. They're going to have to pick up the effort. Well, it's going to be tough here to win the team, though. Not exactly a clinic in three-point shooting. 0 for 16 combined for these two teams. But obviously, if you're going to go cold, if each team's going to go cold, the advantage does go to the Tar Heels. They've got more size, and they dominated points in the paint in half number one, thanks in large part to that man, Bryce Johnson, who was a terror on the offensive glass. Tar Heels up 19 with the basketball first here in half number two in Chapel Hill. Meeks. Had it blocked, got it back. 
and lays it in. I think people really don't realize how skilled Kennedy Meeks is. I mean, just from the standpoint right there, that was a great defensive play. And here he comes up with another steal, an opportunity. <laughs> now, you know what? I'm going to stop talking good about Kennedy. Because every time I say, last time I started talking good about him, he shot an air ball from the free throw line. And this time, he comes up with a great steal, doing his job, tremendous defensive position, and then he throws the pass to Bryce Johnson, the power forward, to bring it up the floor. Kennedy and I are going to have a talk after this game. <laughs> Three ball spins out for Wisnett. Out of bounds to the Tar Heels with 29 to shoot. The way this game has gone, I was waiting for someone, J.P. Tokido or Bryce Johnson, to actually catch that reflective pass and dunk. If anybody could do it, it'd be Tokido. Yeah, this is true. This is true. Johnson wheels and deals. Meeks sneaks it in with the left. Not saying anything positive, because I'm not sure what he's going to do when we come down this other end. <laughs> I'll say he's got 10, and I'll leave it at that. That is a positive. You, you have to put that out there. Lost the handle. Did and Ziggy. Ahead of the pack, Tokido. Tried the blind pass, but deflected away into the hands of Robinson. And then a foul on North Carolina. How about the play today by Kennedy Meeks? Well, and it's pretty much every game. Right now, averaging a double-double for North Carolina, 14 points and 10 rebounds. He's been the one guy that's consistent for them and has been consistent for them all year. We go back to the Iowa game, and if you remove his 6-for-8 shooting from the field, the North Carolina shooting percentage was horrible. So he was the one guy that they were able to rely on in that Iowa game, only scoring 55 points, which I believe set all kinds of records here in the Dean Dome. Not the good, not the good guy. Be known for. Uh, the dubious marks. <laughs> they were out-rebounded by Iowa by a rather significant margin. They actually gave up 29 offensive rebounds to Butler. Those are just not Tar Heel-type numbers with all the size and bulk they normally have in the post. Rare turnover on the Tar Heels. They only had one in the entire first half. And this is something that over his 27 years head coaching career you see for Roy Williams when he lets you know he's not happy with what you're doing right now all five come out everyone is responsible we're going to get a new group in there you know he has the luxury of that new group that new group coming in being all pretty good players right. by the way well, Roy Williams does it when he's angry John Calipari does it just for the sake of doing it one platoon to the other as he calls it reinforcements <laughs> Bump foul by Joel James. When he hits you, you're going to feel it. Absolutely. James goes 6'10", 280. Maybe he'll lose some weight, shed that T-shirt like Kennedy Meeks did. Well, you know, he doesn't have as much baby fat, doesn't seem as though as Kennedy did coming in. But like I said, I think he must just like it because he doesn't need to have that T-shirt on. <laughs> nice take to the glass by Joel Berry. Berry is just a freshman. He's the only player in the history of Florida high school basketball to win Mr. Basketball Honors three consecutive years. Remember Vince Carter, former Tar Heel, was Mr. Basketball in the Sunshine State. He did it in 95. Joe Berry, a, a tenacious defender. I had the opportunity to coach Joel in the USA Hoop Summit this year. He, alongside Tyus Jones, our two point guards, and got a win this year. We lost two years ago. And Theo Pinson also a part of that team, so we're fortunate to have those guys on our group. Nice move by the big man there, Joel James, showing a little finesse. Remember when I said that group that they bring it off the bench is pretty good? Yeah, this yeah. is that group. <laughs> I mean, Isaiah Hicks scored seven points in three minutes in this right. first in the game. I mean, you Joel James making plays in the post. And again, 
you look out there, you're talking about, you know, a number of guys that can contribute to this team. And I think really North Carolina still, as James shows you that touch on the on the turnaround jump shot, I think this North Carolina team is still trying to find its identity. Mm -hmm. You know, right now they rely on Marcus Page a tremendous amount and more so than they have to because they have so many other guys that can give them production. You know, that three-point thing is always going to come up, the three-point shooting, shooting, shooting. Forget that. Don't worry about shooting the basketball. Beat everybody up in the paint. Make them stop you down there. Play good defense. You've got a chance to be good because, I mean, when people look at it, Kentucky only has two shooters. Mm -hmm. You know, Devin Booker, Aaron Harrison, they're the two shooters. Outside of that, they're not a great three-point shooting team either, but they get the job done defense. Foul called on Tar Heels down low. We're going to talk about a shooter. That guy right there, mm -hmm. Jeff Lebo, he was a shooter. No question about it. I'm sure he still can shoot it. That's not something you lose. Second all three-point percent percentage leader in the history of Tar Heel basketball. And he got him on the pump fake. Pinson left his feet. Got the foul. You see what Jeff Lebo, Lebo, by the way, going power purple today. <laughs> Not many guys can pull that off. Lebo, nearly 43%. Hubert Davis, the assistant coach with the Tar Heels, number one all time at 43 and a half percent. Jeff Lebo, I remember when Coach Lebo was at Auburn as a head coach for seven years. Before that, he was an assistant at South Carolina under Eddie Fogler, who was an assistant with Roy Williams under Dean Smith. And Jeff Lebo would actually go up against the team and play, and he could still bomb threes. So, he, yeah, he's still got some guns in the holster. Yeah, well, I go back to when he actually was a freshman coming into North Carolina, back when I used to read the Street Smith magazine, and, and seeing the guard from Carlisle, Pennsylvania, coming into North Carolina and being excited about actually was a North Carolina fan. I really always liked North Carolina, except for the four years I had to play against <laughs> Amazing how that changed quickly. Yeah, I was old for in this building. Doesn't no matter how many of the tries, I never won one. Joel Berry, that's a guy they think in time will become a great shooter at the collegiate level. No backcourt off a Tar Heel defender. Shot clock under 10. Now at five. And that's going to be an offensive foul. B.J. Tyson had to force it. Tar Heels still up big, 58-34. The future, one of the freshmen, Joel Berry, showing he's got touch from outside. The presentation of college basketball is brought to you by Joseph A. Bank. We fit most everyone. JOSBank.com. Tar Heels leading the Pirates of East Carolina 58 to 34 here in the second half. Help us beat cancer. The V Foundation awards 100% of direct donations and net proceeds of events to fund cancer research. Log on to JimmyV.org or call 1-800 for Jimmy V to donate. Obviously, that's a good cause, goes on every year. That's another cause. If you see the pin there on the left side of the jacket of Jeff Lebo, that is for recognition of a cure for autism. Kyle Robinson, who is their director of basketball operations, his son has autism, and they have championed that cause. They have helped raise money in the state of North Carolina for a cure for autism, so a great cause on the other side as well. Strong take, bodies bump, and a great job by Wisnett to absorb the blow and still muscle it into the basket. And he deserves to get the flex after this one. When you take it to Joel James and finish, you can show a little muscle afterwards. And Wisnett giving me a little bit of flex right there. I see you, Terry. Give me just a little bit, not too much. When you're down 22, you can't flex with so much. But he gave us just, <laughs> just a slight bit. But, you know, Terry Wilson, he's had success against the Tar Heels. He understands what it's, what it's like to beat these guys. However, he was with the ACC champion Florida State Seminoles two years ago, able to do it. His East Carolina team has a tough task on hand to try to pull that feet off. Special game for him. He was a prolific scorer, a machine at Cherryville 
High School in Charlotte, North Carolina. Scored over 2,500 points. Nice take to the basket by Joel Berry. These are all valuable minutes for these younger Tar Heel players. They really are. And, you know, one of the things I've noticed about the second half for North Carolina, I don't believe they've shot a three-pointer yet. And from that standpoint, you know, it's one of those things where you just kind of, hey, if it's not falling, don't keep trying to, you know, fix it. Just move away from it and do something else. Nice jumper by B.J. Tyson. He's got six. The Tar Heels have only launched five from behind the arc. They're 0 for 5, but as you said, they don't need it. No, they really don't. Now we see East Carolina in the zone for the first time. I thought we saw this much earlier, but now they're starting to play the 2-3 zone against North Carolina to try to slow down you know, Carolina more so from attacking the basket, but Carolina's done a great job getting to the rim. And speaking of three-pointers, there's my guy, Theo Pitts, is stepping up, knocking down the first one for the Tar Heels this afternoon. First one of the game. Hence in another one of those Highly touted freshman. You know, we hear a lot of talk about North Carolina and how tough they are. You know, I think that's the thing where, you know, the experts want to pick on North Carolina right now as far as their toughness. I honestly think between Pinson and J.P. Tokyo, they have those guys, you know, that bring that toughness to the floor from a defensive standpoint every night. I think it's just a young group that hasn't played a lot together. They need to develop chemistry, and they need games like this in order to help them become successful. They've had a very tough schedule, to be honest, with the beginning of this season. I think this Carolina team is still going to be good. I'm not really ready to give up on them yet. And they do have wins over Florida and UCLA. East Carolina basketball. And you've got the two freshmen, Joel Berry, Theo Pinson, Putting points on the board as they continue to get more comfortable with this lineup. I honestly believe these North Carolina Tar Heels have a strong future. You were talking about the North Carolina schedule, who they played up next. How about a trip to Rupp Arena on December the 13th to take on number one Kentucky? Like I said, it, it, one of the things about being North Carolina. As we see Kayla White knock down the first three for East Carolina. One of the things about being North Carolina, you have to play everybody. You can't, you can't duck anybody. You know, with Kentucky, with, you, with North Carolina, with Duke, Kansas, when you're the elites, you have to play everyone. You can't just play a cupcake schedule. And so when you look at their schedule, you see, I mean, it. It's never an easy point having to play AC. Butler's a very good team. UCLA's a very good team. Florida's a good team. Iowa's a good team. Kentucky, Ohio State. When you look at that, this is six non-conference games. Then you have to play 18 ACC games. That gives you, you know, six games where you can play against not so great competition. You know, this guy right here has won over 700 games, <laughs> and he's won it against very good competition, whether he was at Kansas or here at Chapel Hill. Off the miss, great save into the hands of Tokido. Ahead to Johnson, who lost it. Quick hands by Caleb White. And then a block by Meeks. Johnson to Page. Numbers. Tokido. And a bucket by Justin Jackson. That's another area where I think North Carolina will be good this year is offensive rebounding. And again, as they continue to develop as a team, pursuing the basketball and attacking, going after offensive rebounds, and that's a way they can put points on the board. East Carolina's opened it up a little bit now. 11 points now for Wisnett. The FSU transfer and then a slam and the foul for Bryce Johnson, who might be on his way to a career day. Bryce Johnson, of course, using that limp. Great pass again by Marcus Page. And when he lets go of the rim, he doesn't drop that far. <laughs> Talking about a wingspan, but an athlete very just the same. 15 points and a career high 15 rebounds for Johnson. It's not a bad day's work. Offensive rebound and stick back for Jackson. And we talked about Justin Jackson. He just knows how to score. Again, it's not necessarily running plays for him or him standing around shooting threes. He knows how to score, just like Tejada knows how to find his way to the rim. 
but North Carolina in control here. Up by 26 have been dominant in Chapel Hill. You're watching the ACC on ESPN. Domination for the Tar Heels after a tough loss to Iowa. Bouncing back with style today over the East Carolina Pirates, 71 to 45, with 11.54 to play here in Chapel Hill. North Carolina has done virtually everything well, shooting nearly 60% from the field, dominating the glass 35 to 20. And you see first half to second half, 11 of 14 in the second half. It doesn't get much more efficient than that. Well, after the last three halves that they've had shooting under 30 percent in the last three halves of their, game, of their games leading into this game, I'm sure this is a welcome relief for Roy Williams really just to kind of get his team back on track and really pick up their confidence a bit. They were loose this morning. You know, they seem to be having a lot of fun this morning and shoot around. And, you know, Coach Williams came in like he was having fun. And that's one of the biggest things about this. I hate it when people forget that these are college kids. That's the reality behind it. They're college kids. These are not professionals. They're not getting paid for this. So understand that they're going to be prone to a significant amount of error. Tokido, about 30 inches in the air, got fouled on a potential stick back there. Now he'll go to the line for a couple. Free throw shooting is what really plagued North Carolina last year. They were one of the worst free throw shooting teams in the country, and that was with Marcus Page, who was one of the top guys in the ACC. If you took Page's numbers out, I mean, they were abysmal at the free throw line, but they've improved that this year. Now they just have to get some of the other shooting numbers up came in as a team shooting 42 percent from 329 percent. They're certainly better than those numbers would indicate. But Page takes at least half of their threes. He's really the only guy that is a consistent three-point shooter as far as not only just making them but taking those shots. They don't have many guys that shoot threes, and that's okay because they have other strengths where they can be successful. Nice step back shot there by Wisnett. Now, you don't see many people shoot a step back jumper out of a trap, but that time Terry Wisnett made it look really good. <laughs> now, he actually started 19 games at Florida State, was not a big scorer there, and as you mentioned, they had a lot of other weapons, of course. He's going to do just fine in Greenville, North Carolina. Tokido hangs and hits. He's got 13. And he's doing just fine here in Chapel Hill because he's put an all-around game together. We talked about him being the leader, the assist leader for North Carolina, but rebounding, defending, and starting to knock down shots. 13 points for him. But that's a bonus when he gives you that type of offensive production. I'm going to go as far as to say this is a shot that I would take in a pickup game. You see... <laughs> You see J.P. Toke, I'm sorry, Mark Space coming with the trap. Oh, two guys, no problem. Step back, jumper is good. You know what you tell your teammates if they get mad about you taking that shot? What's that? You say, well, I had two guys with me, so if I miss, you should get an offensive That's rebound right. because you've got numbers. You just put it up there. <laughs> it's a great shot. Spoken like a true gunner. Hey, somebody got to shoot it. That's right. Tyson. The lefty triggers. And buries it. And getting right where he's comfortable, right to the free throw line. He's a guy that lives on the free throw line and has so far early in his East Carolina career. Slam dunk. Tokido. Meeks on the rebound. Off a curl, nice dish down low. That's a beautiful feed from Jackson the Meeks. The ball movement from North Carolina has been great tonight. And really, you think about the way they're sharing the basketball, and again, finding guys for layups. And I mean, of course, East Carolina's defense hasn't been the greatest. 
Meeks with a steal. Kip and go. Offensive foul called. Roy Williams irate on that one. Well, you see Kennedy Meeks with the great hands, the give and go back and forth between he and Justin Jackson. It's hard to see right there. You know what? I'm going with the officials. If the officials say it's a charge, it's a charge. I'm not going against my guys in the black and white, the toughest job in the game. It's the right call. That's a charge. Regardless as to where you are, that is the right call. He got set before he left the floor. It's a charge. Of course, if he's inside that arc, that's a no-charge zone, but he was outside of it. White blocked, but a foul called on Hubert. Right now, I got to send a message to all the young basketball players out there. You notice now in basketball, and this didn't happen when I was playing, mm -hmm. you're, you're not much younger than me, you're, but you're still younger than me. Appreciate you clarifying <laughs> Man, no that. No problem, no problem, no problem. <laughs> You notice how when guys go down, everybody sprints over to yeah. help pick them up? Right. Do they not realize that's a wet spot? <laughs> that so doesn't make sense. Right. You're running as fast as you can to the wet spot. Right. That's how people get hurt. Yeah. You know, and I've seen guys go over there and slip in the wet spot, and now they fall into the guy that's, that's on the ground. Now you got two guys right. down on the ground, and somebody else is going to sprint over there and try to pick them up. So what you're saying is it doesn't make a whole lot of sense to do it. It's going to be Keystone Cops at some point. <laughs> Everybody's going to have five guys laying on the ground in one wet spot. You yeah. don't want a five-car pileup no. on the floor. I help my teammates up, but I'm going to take my time getting over there. I'm not sprinting. <laughs> Page around the screen. Page gliding to the hole. I love it. Marcus Page can do that against pretty much any type of competition. And I think that will allow him to be able to open up those three-pointers a little more once he's attacking the basket. Look at that quick pass by Page to Tokeno. That's what you call catching a flat tire. Everyone was expecting the highlight dunk from Tokoto, and he's got the smile. Theo Pinson laughs at him because everybody was expecting the major dunk, and he caught a flat tire on the way up with the layup. This happens to me a lot, Corey. <laughs> I, I, I have trouble deciding what slam dunk I'm going to do, and the flat tire hits me, as it does Tokoto right here. <laughs> Carolina, 83 to 52. East Carolina led by that man Jeff Olivo, who starred for the Tar Heels in the late 80s, was a tremendous player. Second team All ACC back in 1988, one of the top three-point shooters in the history of the program. Over 1,500 points in his career, and now coaching in his 17th overall season. Four at Tennessee Tech, two at Chattanooga, six at Auburn, and now in his fifth year with the Pirates of East Carolina. Three ball, nothing but net for Caleb White. He came in shooting 43% from downtown. He's got eight. Well, he, he's got to be a good three-point shooter simply because he played for my, I call my twin brother from another father and mother, Curtis Staples at Virginia Episcopal School. And anybody that's around Curtis Staples has to be able to shoot. Right. That's pretty much it. I mean, you go sit down with Curtis Staples, you walk out as a shooter. <laughs> and you never picked up a basketball the entire time you went there. Caleb played for Curtis for two years at Virginia Episcopal, and no surprise he's been successful coming in playing East Carolina. Look at that block. My goodness. That was Hubert on the rejection. I'm looking forward to that Kentucky-North Carolina game. I think that one can be a... Uh, they've played some classics over the last couple years. And I think this year will be a good, another good one. I thought a lot of luster has gone away because Carolina's dropped a couple games. But when you're playing against Kentucky, I think that brings just like a different type of effort. Hey. Tokido high off the glass, set of bounds. It'll be East Carolina basketball. Tar Heels in control. Offense is rolling. Defense, a little swat here by the senior Desmond Hubert. In control of this one, 83 to 55 over East Carolina with 7.41 to play. 
On Friday, ESPNU brings you coverage of the 2014 NCAA Men's College Cup with a win or go home doubleheader as four teams vie for a shot at the national title. Semifinal action kicks off at five and continues at seven, presented by Northwestern Mutual UVA, taking on UMBC at five, Providence UCLA at 7.30. If you come to the Dean Smith Center, you're going to run into a lot of former players. Dexter Strickland from 2009 to 2013. Definitely one of the faster guys that played here. I can remember him. You know, Dexter Strickland and Kyrie Irving played together in the backcourt in high school. That's pretty good backcourt. <laughs> See the high school team that had to match up with that backcourt. Then they learned to hate each other because one went to Duke and the other went to North Carolina. Mm -hmm. Only on the court. Only on the court. Well, I shouldn't say that because <laughs> I know some Duke guys and Carolina guys that do literally hate each other. Another rebound for Johnson. Tacked that on to his career high. He's got 17 carries. Tokido looking to create. That's creation to Bryce Johnson on the slam. 17 and 17 now for Johnson. And, and Johnson's numbers are staggering, no question about that. But I've really been impressed with the way J.P. Tokito has passed the basketball. I mean, he's had a complete game, but he's not just making the simple pass. He's doing some stuff that's relatively difficult that a lot of point guards aren't doing in college basketball right now. Great point. He came in leading the team in assists. He's got seven today. He's going for eight right here. Got it. Did you see J.P. Tokens? I mean, he, he, he continues to, you know, help this team get better. That's one of the things that you ask of your players. Make other guys better. You know, again, he's not a guy that you're going to rely on to go out and get you 20 points a game. But he is a guy that can help his teammates get 20 points a game. So from that standpoint, you know, that's what you want to see. And it's not just him, but he's just stood out so much. And it started from the beginning of the game, coming out, making good passes, getting his guys in, in, in good situations. And it's just continued the entire game. Entire it's a great take of the hole by Caleb White. Tar Heels looking to improve the six and two and then getting ready for a matchup with number one, Kentucky. Tokido got fouled. And talking about you know, J.P. Tokido, and he really, he's been so patient as you see him with the basketball here, but he's so patient as things go along. And instead of him forcing a pass in, he uses the screen and roll, brings both defenders and then the wraparound pass for the finish for Bryce Johnson. But by taking away both defenders and knowing who was going to be open and just waiting for Bryce to step in at the right time to be able to finish, that is called basketball IQ. The kids at home scoring basketball IQ remember that. A lot of times, many of today's players don't have that. Here's Tokido again. And you see him again, another great pass. I mean, he just continues to rack up the assist numbers. And, you know, I came in looking at the numbers and how does J.P. Tokido average more assists per game than Marcus Page? But now I see how. I mean, you know, he, he's, he's making quality passes, making good basketball plays. And now has 19 points to go alongside him. But the thing I like about this year's Tar Heel team compared to last they don't rely as heavily on Marcus Page. Take today, for example, Page only has five points, but he's got so many other guys contributing that they haven't needed him to take on a tremendous load of the scoring burden today. Well, one thing that has never, and I can't remember any time, ever been a deficit in Chapel Hill is talent. Right. <laughs> They've got a lot of guys that know how to play basketball and who were very good players in high school and are normally going to be very good college and professional players. So from that standpoint, you know, they just have to spend some time together gelling as a team. One of the best times for college basketball is after exams and no one, you know, all, all you have is basketball, no school, and you get to build some chemistry. And I think the Cardinals will do that. Well, typically speaking, the ESPN 100 is chock full of future Tar Heels. Fourth rank recruiting class, three of the top 100 making their way to Chapel Hill. We've kind of become accustomed to that. 
One McDonald's All-American ESPN Top 100 kid after another. But this year they haven't signed anyone. And, and from that standpoint, honestly, I think that's a good thing. I think, you know, Roy Williams has been hurt by the one and done. He's been hurt by early entries into the draft. You know, it's part of the game. None of us can change it, but the reality behind it is when you have to continue to go out and recruit McDonald's All-Americans over other McDonald's All-Americans, you can't keep everyone happy. But if you don't do it when one guy leaves, now you're left with a huge gaping hole in the middle of your lineup, so it's a catch-22. But you don't win outside of, and, and, and that has an actual side, outside of Kentucky with, with Anthony Davis and Michael K. Gilchrist, who were the fourth and fifth leading shot getters on that team. They also had Terrence Jones, Deron Lamb, but they had some veterans back. But outside of that, you don't win national championships with freshmen. Right. It doesn't work college basketball. You need a veteran group. Keep in mind, after John Calipari's team won the national championship, when they lost some of those one and dunners, they were an NIT team the following year as Page takes it strong to the basket, an and one opportunity for the junior guard. Yeah, I think this is where Marcus Page really can make a difference and, and, and be a difference maker for this Carolina team. Not necessarily settling for jump shots, but finding his way. He's always been a guy that's been good attacking the basket. I think he's gotten away from it quite a bit, but as this season wears on, if he continued to do that and get back to the free throw line, I believe he will become the guy that everyone expected him to be, the preseason All-American here at North Carolina. Well, Marcus Page for a long list of Tar Heels to make it to the NBA. Kentucky right now leading the way with 19, Duke 18. Tar Heels and Jayhawks each with 17 guys in the league. Well, it's not just Marcus Page. There are a number of them wearing, <laughs> wearing the Carolina blue here today. They, this guy's one. Bryce, Bryce Johnson will be one. Kennedy Meeks. You know, they have a number of guys that will play in the NBA. Tar Heels in control of this one. 94-57, our score. Matchup, Brendan. The story here in Chapel Hill, North Carolina. After coming off a tough loss to Iowa, blowing the doors off East Carolina, J.P. Tokido having a great day. And he's been a playmaker and a scorer here finding Kennedy Meeks. But he hasn't just done it. He leads the Tar Heels in assists. But he's getting buckets here this afternoon. The highlight slam he's always known for, except for on that flat tire, which his teammates got a great laugh out of. But J.P. Tokito has done it all here this afternoon for the Tar Heels. One and one for Britt, who shoots field goals right-handed, free throws left-handed. You'll see today the offense, the shooting woes, not really today. 58% from the field. They really haven't fired off many threes. And 24 assists. You'll take that any game of the week. And I believe that the guys that, you know, really have gotten the job done in the paint can get the job done in the paint against any competition. Mm -hmm. You know, maybe not as a high of a clip, but Kennedy meets Bryce Johnson, Isaiah Hicks. These guys can score on the inside against anyone. Right. So it doesn't, it's not just because of the competition. East Carolina down the road this year. But it's not because of competition. I think these guys can go do this against the likes of Kentucky. They have the size to battle with Kentucky. They right. have the size to battle with pretty much anyone. And it's going to be interesting to see if, if Coach Williams really adapts that philosophy to where, hey, guys, let's stop firing off all these threes and let's get the ball inside to these big guys and allow them to go to work. I love what Roy Williams said today. We just started talking about kind of the state of the game and how it's changed going back to well, your era, Corey, and certainly years before that when he was an assistant at North Carolina. A couple of things he talked about. The game is so much more physical today. They keep trying to clean it up officiating wise, but guys are bigger, stronger. So he talked about that being a big factor. And then scouting, that's something I never thought of. Scouting now is so advanced. Every game is televised. You know what your opponent is doing as the Tar Heels will go back to the free throw line. The Jimmy B Classic is back on ESPN live from Madison Square Garden. First Villanova faces Illinois, then Indiana takes on fifth-ranked Louisville. It's the 20th anniversary celebration for legendary head coach Jim Balvano. The Jimmy B Classic begins on Tuesday at 7 on ESPN, the home court of College Hoops. Well, you, know, you talk about, you know, the, the players are bigger, stronger, faster. I think, you know, I think they're better ball handlers today. I honestly believe that all that we talked about, and I think Coach Williams made a great point with the scouting, 
But honestly, I just don't think that players are good as shooters now mm -hmm. as they were in the past. I mean, you know, I, I can remember watching, you know, basketball growing up and especially college basketball in the 80s and watching guys like, you know, Jeff Lamp and, you know, of course, all the, the great North Carolina players who they didn't miss open shots. Right. Now, you know, open shots are so what? Mm -hmm. Guys don't make them and everybody's enamored with the three-point line. The mid-range game is gone. So from that standpoint alone, Terry Wisdom way up above. I'm not sure if he got a little boost on that one. I think he used somebody's back as a step ladder. It might have been that of Isaiah Hicks. Well, Theo Pinson coming out of the pile looking a little disoriented. Took a hit, but you see Wisdom got way up in the air. Got to be careful of that backboard. Yeah, it was Pinson who used Pinson as a step ladder. Hicks on the rebound for the Tar Heels, flirting with the century mark. And this will get him closer, another trip to the free throw line for Nate Britt. You know, I mean, and also talking with Coach Williams today, I mean, you know, and I'm not even going to talk about the academic issues. I mean, that, that horse has been beaten enough, <laughs> in my opinion. But one thing I will say, it's time to get off my guy, Roy. I mean, at the end of the day, the issue started in 1992. Roy Williams was in Kansas for another 10 years after that. And to expect any college coach to be able to not only recruit and win and be a spokesperson for the university and raise money and do all the things that college coaches are asked to do and also know exactly what classes your players are taking, I think there are unrealistic expectations for any college coach, not just Roy Williams, but also for any college coach across the country. But I think it's time to get off my man Roy. I, you know, at the end of the day, he's not happy with the situation. He, as a North Carolina alum, he's embarrassed by it as well. But realistically speaking, he had nothing to do with it. That's just my two cents. <laughs> I'm glad you got it in. Wisnett, nifty move. I'll tell you what, Terry Wisnett will be a force in the American Conference this year, he's got 15 today. And Jeff Lebo definitely has some tools to work with. Of course, not a great day for them coming in here, but it's not a great day for many teams coming in playing in this game. James rattles one home. And the Tar Heels have broken 100. Tejada with eight to shoot. Nice kick out pass. And an offensive foul going for the rebound. Got Zengari on a push. That's five on Zengari, so he'll leave the game. Wholesale substitutions coming in for North Carolina. Blue steel, baby. You see in the JV game earlier today, Hubert Davis, the head coach, paying his dues. Roy Williams was the head coach of the JV team when he was here as an assistant for eight years. I asked Hubert today, are you going to break any of Coach Williams' records? He said, absolutely not. We're not winning anywhere near the clip they were winning back in the day. I walked in just as that game was coming down to the wire. It was tied at 97, and their opponent hit a buzzer-beating three-point shot. So. Hubert Davis had a tough loss earlier today, but he's going to pick up the win as an assistant coach of the varsity here. And I think if he had to pick one, he would go with this one. <laughs> Hubert, of course, doing a great job with ESPN for many years and coming back to Chapel Hill as an assistant. Former member of the JV team, Sasha Seymour, who led them in scoring and rebounding a year ago, but, you know, recipient of the George Mitchell Scholarship, which allows North Carolina students to be able to study abroad in Northern Ireland. And, you know, when you start receiving scholarships as such, you got to be a pretty smart guy. I mean, you know, I didn't get one of those. <laughs> <laughs> and I think I'm a very smart guy. I, I would concur with that. I'd just maybe see more as just a, just a step higher. 
You know, as long as you continue to concur when I compliment myself, <laughs> you and I can continue to work together. <laughs> is that the key all season long? You know, that is keep the key. About? You and I are going to spend a lot of time together this year. And, you know, when I say complimentary things about myself, uh -huh. I need you to concur. Absolutely. And if I'm being self-deprecating, yes. you disagree. Abs okay, I got okay. it. Agree with the good stuff, disagree with the bad stuff. Right. Okay. Well, you and I, we're going we're to oh, have a future. It's going to be a lot of fun. Mental notes have been taken. Tar Heels up big. Playing out the final minute 20. There he goes. Got it. There was no denying <laughs> Seymour in that basket because he got fouled about six times in a matter of three seconds, and he still found a way to get it in the hoop. Tyson. And that's it's bumped in midair. I'll go back to the line. And you want to talk about getting physical. This is physical. Sasha taking on the triple team as if there's no one there. <laughs> Give me two. Sasha understands he ain't getting a lot of opportunities. It's not like when he was on the JV. He was the guy on the JV team. Right. got the ball all the time. Now he's not getting it as often. Got to take advantage of the minutes he gets. Going to be a little harder to find action against Kentucky. But like I said, take advantage of your time when you get it. <laughs> That's all you can do. Hey, all you can do is produce when you get the opportunity. Keith Armstrong coming in for East Carolina. The upcoming schedule for North Carolina at Kentucky on Saturday. UNC Greensboro, Ohio State, another top 20 foe. And then UAB and William and Mary. UNC Greensboro, Wes Miller, another UNC alum, head coach over there. So, and they're going to Greensboro. Now, there's a little method to that madness, though, because UNC Greensboro plays at the Greensboro Coliseum, where the ACC tournament will be held. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it's getting a little extra time in at the Coliseum before you have to go play in the tournament there. I'm guessing plenty of Tar Heel fans will get their hands on tickets for that one. I can't say that, you know, Greensboro will have the predominant crowd in that. <laughs> the Tar Heel faithful will travel very well. Another point for Seymour. Again, he didn't lead the JV team in scoring and rebounding for nothing. He understands how to get his number. He's probably saying, if I got Bryce Johnson up at the time, I would get Bryce Johnson numbers. Backups here. That's Simmons. Winding down the final five seconds. Don't forget Arkansas and Clemson coming up later here on ESPNU. Shot is off the mark, and that will close it out. Two coaches very fond of one another. We'll go back several years. Roy Williams and Jeff Lebo. Tar Heels just too much today. 108 to 64, the final score. Corey, a pleasure. Look forward to seeing you throughout the regular season, my man. I enjoyed it. Same here. Shout out to my man, Dino Gaudio. <laughs> Coming up next, our Jimmy V. Week coverage continues with Arkansas and Clemson. But first, let's take you to the studio for now. So long from Chapel Hill, everybody.